How are we doing everybody? Sam here, United People's TV, joined by Rory from CFC Fan TV, ahead of, I think it's our bogey ground, Stamford Bridge, Man United there. I think we've won <laughs> once there since 2002 in the Premier League. Oof, good record for us. That's a great record for you. 2012, the last time we won there, 3-2. Hernandez oh, got an offside Van per winner. Yeah, Van Persie killed you us. You were down to nine yeah, men. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. going into the game, we're going to talk about, in the preview, we're going to talk about the form going into the game, injuries, my starting eleven. Sort of the feeling around Chelsea and the feeling around United. Do Chelsea miss Diego Costa, Morata versus Lukaku? There's a lot to talk about. And I want to get some context as well from Rory as a Chelsea fan. Mourinho's been saying some strange things in last week. I want to know what your reaction was. Yeah, when, he, he hasn't said he nothing yet. You wait. Uh, I know. Yeah. We know more's yeah, coming. Yeah. But anyway, for going into the game, Chelsea, you're coming in off the back of a pretty bad defeat. I would say humiliating defeat to Roma. Yeah, bad week. Really bad week for us. Um, like really disappointing because it did feel like we had turned a corner. Things weren't going very well. Um, it seemed like there was a light at the end of the tunnel and we were reaching that. And then we went to the Stadio Olimpico and yeah, it was a Halloween fright night. 3-0 and it could, could it have been more? Oh think? God, yeah, 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 yeah. We couldn't get the ball off them. Really? Like, we were appalling, yeah. It was, it was for the first time under Antonio Conte's uh, tenure, it was shambolic. And like, pr prior to that, though, you, you, you won against Bournemouth, you won against Watford, you thought, you know, yes. sort of return into a, a winning mentality, but then it all went out the window. Yeah, it did. And like that win against Watford, it really did feel like, you know, you have these pivotal moments in a season, and it really did feel like that win could be one of those moments. Mm. You know, we were losing, there was about 20 minutes left, we were 2-1 down, Watford were on the up, they'd beaten Arsenal the previous week, and we managed to turn it round. Conte made a great mm. substitution, got Batshuayi on, he ended up scoring two goals, he won the game and felt a bit buoyant. Went down to Bournemouth, although it only ended up 1-0. It was, it was one of those, you know, those sort of most complete 1-0 wins yeah, that yeah. you can do. Right. But we're back to square one and it's probably, it's, you know, the worst possible time to be back to square one because, I mean, you spoke about form and you spoke about your record at Stamford Bridge already, but playing Manchester United is... So it's, so it's, Almost it's always a good a, time to play you at Stamford Bridge, you think? It's a good time. It's a good time for you to play us, definitely. Yeah, yeah I, uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, of course, you have a bad record at Stamford Bridge, and that goes back. I mean, you highlighted it there, but it goes back to when I was a kid. It goes back to you being double winners and us beating you one nil, Gavin mm. Peacock scoring. I mean, it really does. Even when we were terrible and you were magnificent, we seem to always do quite well against you at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, Chelsea, have always, Mourinho had had Fergie's number the yes. whole way through his career. Yeah, yeah, he did. Now Mourinho is in charge of us. Hopefully he's going to have Conte's number, but that was a real nightmare we had last year. Yes. At Stamford Bridge. That, was it 4-0? 4-0, yeah. Four it was 1-0 after about 20 yeah, seconds, wasn't Pedro's, it? Yeah, Pedro's a Chris yeah. Smalling horror mistake, but he's in my starting 11, because I think we're probably going to play three at the back against you. I'll give you my starting 11 later on. But going into the match, Man United beat Benfica, comfortable 2-0 win. We really were not that good but we won 2-0. Top of the Champions League group after four games of 12 oh, points. Do you, know how, do you know how lucky and privileged and jealous I am of you, Sam, to say that sentence? You know, we weren't very good, but we won 2-0 in Europe. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the sign of a brilliancy. Exactly. That's the hallmark of champions. When yeah. you win when you're playing shit, that's w what you really want. Uh, obviously, we had the Spurs win before that. That was... Um, huge. Again, a huge. Great win. That, huge. That was a great... And I've seen people... Yeah. Some people complained about that. There's a real... I don't know what to describe it as, but there's a set of United fans who are a little bit frustrated with Mourinho's style of play. And that was always going to be the case because we've, got, we've come from some at Busby, yeah. Fergie, attack-minded coaches like Guardiola is at Man City. When everything like that is going on at Man City, just across the city, and we're playing like that under Mourinho, people are saying, oh, why can't we do that? But Mourinho, we we, do that? It's, it's a bit disingenuous to make that criticism, I think, because what Mourinho brings is solidity, trophies, mm. and... What he doesn't bring is entertainment. It's not his thing. But you are so likely to win a trophy this season. You have we the best man. Last year, didn't we? Exactly. Absolutely. Um, but I, I'm not. I'm, I love all of the trophies that you yeah. won. I think the the Europa League deserves huge amounts of recognition. It's a very difficult trophy to win. But I mean, they're not the they're not the trophies that you associate with Manchester United. I feel that you could easily yeah. win a trophy that you associate your club with. I mean, yeah, that, that is what this season is about. His success is going to be measured against the Premier League and the Champions League and how well we're doing. And he's the those. perfect man to to lead you to one of those, if not both of those. He is an incredible master of winning trophies. Um, people can score five goals all they want, but you getting one nil wins against Tottenham bags yeah, the I, same I, amount of points. This is the crazy thing because we've scored four goals against Crystal Palace this season, Swansea this season, West Ham, CSK, Moscow and Burton. Five different games we've scored four goals in and it's only November. 
Yeah. Van Gaal only did that twice yeah, in yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. He scored four or more goals. So we have been attacking with intent, but without Popa, without Mkhitaryan being in form, our creativity has gone... Right. And we are really... And you're struggling. still getting the wins, though. So yeah, Lukaku's it's in... been coming very isolated. But speaking of Lukaku, Morata, obviously, prior to the summer, and prior to the season starting, it was a bit of a transfer swapsies. We yeah. all thought we were signing Morata. You all thought you were signing Lukaku. How has he been in the last couple of games going into this? Is he a player that we should be worried about? Is he your danger man? Yes, he's our danger man, but I don't know how worried you should be. Right. I, I, I'm i far more concerned about Romelu Lukaku than I think you should be of Alvaro Morata. Don't get me wrong, Morata on his day is incredible. We went away to Stoke earlier this season. Uh, he it was a masterful centre-forward performance, scored a hat-trick and looked Excellent. You know, a variety of goals as well. Yeah. One point beating them for pace, the other one was a poacher's goal. It was nice to see. There's a long way to go, though, because do you know what I think the flaw in his game is? Um, Morata, of course, yeah. It's, uh, he seems like such a lovely fella. I follow him on Instagram and he's always like baking cakes with his missus and he's got his arm around some round her show and he looks like a lovely guy and he'd be in wonderful company on a night out, I'm sure. But I just want him to give a centre half an elbow or something. He needs that. He you know that, that element side, doesn't, that side doesn't seem to. We haven't seen it yet, and it's getting to the point where we really do need him to take the game, to take a game by the scruff of the neck and drag us to a victory that perhaps we're not entitled to. I suppose a good example here would be Rome away. He had a chance. I think we were two 0 down at the time. He had a chance. Would have made it two one. Mm. Game completely changes. In that sort of situation, Diego Costa would drag Chelsea to a two all draw. The game would finish 2 all, if not 3-2 to Chelsea, because Diego Costa would force it and he would drive their centre-half crazy. One of them would get sent off. He'd then win a penalty, score a goal, and suddenly we're the, we're the offensive team. Alvaro Morata doesn't, hasn't yet demonstrated that sort of quality for Chelsea. And the way that Romelu Lukaku has done it incredibly for you, we haven't yet seen that from Morata. Mm. Well, that's kind of interesting. The hot fingers crossed that doesn't change. I've been, I've got, I'm in a terrible situation here as well, Sam, because I'm, I've had a bet. A dear friend of mine, uh, Wayne Cohen, I'm sure he, he definitely subscribes to you, actually. Right. No, We've had a bet oh, at the beginning of the season. Obviously, I had to back my man and he had to back his. Right. And it's, there's quite a lot at stake. It's who will score more goals in the Premier League over the course of the season, right. Morata versus Lukaku. And the loser has to take me, my wife, him and his wife, out to a, a, a restaurant of, of the other ones choosing mm. and pay, settle the entire bill. So, for example, if Murata scores more than Lukaku, I can t- say to Wayne, Wayne, I'd like to go for dinner at Claridge's. I'd like two bottles of wine and perhaps a whiskey chaser and you foot the bill. That is a, I'm a very rather worried. expensive bet. I've already started saving up. <laughs> <laughs> well, going into the game, there's, an, there's a bit of an interesting situation right now with Manchester United fans and Jose Mourinho. Uh, prior to the Spurs game, uh, Mourinho said that fans need to get behind Lukaku. And I'll be honest, I didn't know any fans that were not behind Lukaku. So it was a weird thing to say then. Then it is, um, in this, after the Spurs game, did the old shush. Was that towards the fans or towards the media itself? We don't know. Um, and then after that game, going into the Benfica match, in the pre-programme notes, he said, I hope you enjoy, some of you enjoy this game more than the Spurs match. And that's come with people saying, being frustrated about... Man United grinding out, not grinding out, but having a 1 0 win. Mm. You know, De Gea's only conceded four goals, I think, in the Premier League this year so far. Yeah, With championship wins. It's Mourinho. We all know this is, this is Mourinho's style of football, but apparently the fans are doing enough for Jose Mourinho to respond. I find it really strange because I haven't really seen that. Yeah, what, I, is, is this what we should expect yes. as, as United fans? Is it, is it going to get worse? It's going to continue. It's, uh, this, is, this is Mourinho in his pomp. This is what he does. Um, sometimes it's irritating, but I wouldn't be too irritated when you're sitting pretty towards the top of the league, doing well in Europe, having won two trophies last year. Don't let it get to you. That, that, that's, that's what I find most strange about it. Is that it's coming at a time where we are doing very well. I would expect this when you lose a couple of games and the pressure starts to mount. But I think I think some, it's going to take a far more intelligent man than me to actually analyse the mind of Mourinho. So, but I'll give it a go. I think some people they function at their best. They they the best is drawn out of them when the chips are down, when it's a backs against the wall, when it's everyone against us. And I think Mourinho likes controversy and hostility and I think he thrives under those circumstances. And I think that having, perhaps he was valid. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't for one second suggest that the Twitter, the general consensus of Twitter represents the general consensus of Old Trafford. Right, but it did, seem, it did seem, when you've just beaten Tottenham, a very good Tottenham team, 
when you've just beaten them one nil, I think it's a bit rich to slate any of the uh, to slate. I agree. The team. I agree. So did Mourinho have a point? Probably. Did he need to say it? Probably not. Is it going to change? Absolutely not. But don't let it get you. Just enjoy it. There you go. From the horse's mouth of a, of a fan who's seen this <laughs> yes. a lot. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the game as well. Injuries going into it. We've both got a lot of midfield injury problems. You've got N'Golo Kante is now 50-50, whether he's going to play or not. He has to play. He ha- well, I hope he doesn't play, but he basically has to play. You've got Drinkwater, who hasn't played 90 minutes yet this season. And then you've got Bakayoko and Fabregas, who are looking a little bit leggy. Oh, you're you know? not kidding. Yeah, you're not kidding. Um, it, does, it, does, this, this, does, you, does you winning or not? Yes, rely completely absolutely. on that. Man, absolutely, uh, w- absolutely. If he if he starts, I would probably make us favourites at home. But even, even in his first game coming back from injury, yeah. you know, he won't be a hundred percent fit. Him at eighty percent is still probably the best midfielder in the country. Right. Um, no, behind Matic, yeah, behind Matic and Pogba and whatever else you've got. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me, he's the be- if, for us. He is the best. You know, he, he changes the dynamic of the way we play. He changes the tempo of the way we play. He's integral to everything good that happens. Yep. So if you, if the team sheet's released at half three on Sunday and you don't see his name, you should you'll become that little emoji personified. You know that little ah. Oh, <laughs> that would be you personified if he's not in the team. If he's in the team, I think it could be a different story. But it's essential for us that he plays because I mean, I love Cesc Fabregas. I love the way he plays football. Yeah. I think that he is, he is a magician in the midfield and I think he has a dazzling eye for a pass. But he's leggy and he's slow and against the dynamism of your midfield, he could be caught out. I mean, I would, wouldn't say our midfield's looking too dynamic at the moment. You've got Paul Pogba's injured, Marouane Fellaini's injured, and prior to him getting injured, Fellaini was bang in form. He's turned United I fans saw your video. around. I had to do an apology. Yeah, I saw your video. I had great. to apologise yeah, yeah, yeah. to him. You know, yeah. he's, he, you know you've, you've got to criticise when you can criticise, but praise when you praise as well, and he deserved the praise and the apology. So well done, Fellaini, but hopefully come back from injury sooner rather than later because we're struggling without Pogba, Fellaini. Carrick's injured as well. Um, it was probably going to be Ander Herrera and the man of the moment right now really is, and I'm not saying it's just because we're playing Chelsea, but Nemanja Matic has been phenomenal for us this season. And I, I know that he wasn't a player that Antonio Conte wanted to sell that came from above him at Chelsea, but what's, your, what's the feeling of Chelsea fans? Were, were, you, were you okay with him leaving and Bakayoko coming in? Uh, look, the first thing to acknowledge here is Nemanja Matic played a crucial role in two Premier League titles in three years. Mm. So it's obviously fantastic because... He has played virtually every game over the, over three years in a season where we've won the league twice. So he's obviously fantastic at football and a master of his position because you don't achieve that. You don't win two leagues in three years if you're not brilliant. Yeah. Fair. That being said, I think there are very rare occasions, I think this may be an example of one, where a transfer actually suits everybody. So Manchester United were desperate for a defensive midfielder, a world-class defensive midfielder. Yeah, we were. Matic suited you. You're happy. Nemanja Matic himself, I felt like he needed a new challenge. I felt like it got a bit stale for him at Chelsea. The fans and his rapport had weakened and his performances weren't at the level that they were when he arrived. So for Matic itself, himself, it worked. Yeah. For Chelsea, we needed, a new, we needed a change for the similar reasons that I mentioned. We were eyeing up Bakayoko. Um, you offered us a lot of money for a man nearly 30. Mm. So it suited us. So I think it could be an example of a, tr- of a transfer that has ticked a lot of boxes, which is a very, very rare occurrence. And would you still say that now in November, seeing how well Matic has played and how crucial he's been to us being second in the league and above you? That's not surprising though, because we know how good he is. He just wasn't that good for us. He didn't suit the way Conte played. Um, I think the way that Mourinho plays, Mourinho likes to take the sting out of a game. Quite, you know, part of this part of the complaints of Manchester United fans or a section of Manchester United fans, it's often slow paced it's it's prioritizing what goes on at the back yeah. tactics by the way just for the record here that i love because i like winning trophies for me football's about winning trophies i don't want to be entertained mm. love a one nil win don't care do you yeah. agree with that well, some of you will some genuinely of you won, but... don't care all i want to do at the end of the season is see 
um, our captain lift trophies. That's all I want. I'm not interested in the football is entertainment argument for me. So Mourinho suits me perfectly as a manager. However, the way that Antonio Conte plays, it isn't quite like that. We don't try and take the sting out of the game. And what was happening with Chelsea last season on occasion is we'd be breaking and we'd be trying to be as dynamic and attacking as possible. And you'd have Pedro making an incisive diagonal run. You'd have Hazard making the same run the other direction. You'd have Costa dragging the defender in one direction. And it, the defence would be panicking. Mm. All of a sudden, the ball would fall to Matic. who would play it square to Aspilicueta in a backwards trajectory. And the entire stadium would go, def- you know, deflate. So it didn't quite suit our style of play. That's not a reflection on, Ma- on Nemanja Matic's brilliance in his position. It just didn't suit us. So right. him doing well at United isn't surprising or annoying. It's, of course he is. He's brilliant at his position. It just didn't suit us. Well, I'm going to say a thank you very much to Chelsea for letting <laughs> that happen. Because honestly, he has been just magnificent in what he does. And him alongside Pogba is the best midfield we've had in a long time. The sooner we get Pogba back, the better. Because Lukaku is finding himself very isolated up front. Is he out? Pogba. Is he out this yeah, week? Yeah, he's out. Pogba's so he was out. supposed to be coming back for this game, but he's still not training with the full team. He's doing individual training. This is charity. huge from my perspective, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just as crucial for me as Angola Is it, Kante is it that big? It's that big. It's, it, not, not, from a, not from a losing perspective, but from a winning perspective. Because right. without him, we can still keep a clean sheet. Right, okay. But with him, we're so much more fluid and better going forward. I see. So I see. as a defensive unit, we're still the exact same under Jose Mourinho. That won't change with or without Popper. We just need him. Because without him, Lukaku's finding himself very isolated up front. So I mean, formation-wise, my predicted start 11 will pull up on the screen now. Um, I'm going for a 3-5-2. I think we used it against Spurs. We, mar- we mirrored the 3-5-2 there. We used 3-5-2 away at CSKA in Moscow. Probably the hardest away game in the group stage of the Champions League for yeah. us. And it worked both times. 4-1 win and a 1-0 win. I think we'll probably play De Gea in goal. I say probably. 100% <laughs> De Gea is going to play in goal. He's been outrageous this season. For you to beat him, you're going to have to pull out some <sighs> worldly shots. So yeah, if you get anything yeah, yeah. within slight reach, he's going to palm it away. Uh, wing backs, we're going to go Ashley Young and Antonio Valencia. Ashley Young's been so good at a left wing back. You wouldn't expect it, but he's been the only person overlapping enough to help whoever's on that left wing. Because right. say Anthony Martial last season did have a good year. We didn't have an overlapping fullback, so he was always double marked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, would all, he would never be able to get past because he'd skip past one and run into another. Someone like Ashley Young is creating more space for Martial to exploit, and he's been great this season, but he's on the bench for me. Uh, and in midfield, Matic will probably start alongside Ander Herrera. As I said, Matic is the key man for us. I find the Herrera thing quite interesting he's because been, he, was, he was the man last year, wasn't he? He was the... It, it, he was, he was, was great when we... I, I went up to Old Trafford late in the season. You beat us 2-0. Herrera played that, that was our best game of the season. That was when we played Lingard and Rashford up front. Yes, right. Yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. I've ever seen two up front but with Mourinho. I think, if I remember rightly, you know, it's all sorts of blend. That was when Herrera and Matt Herrera Hazard. played very well that day. Yeah. Man marked Hazard out of the yeah. game. You can do that if you've got a midfield three. If you've got a midfield yeah, two, you can't. Yeah, yeah. you can't. And right now, we don't have... Has he two. fallen out of favour, though, Herrera? Um, yeah, he has a little bit, to be fair. Uh, that's because of how good Matic and Popper have been. Right. And Fellaini. Fellaini's form and the form of those three means that he's third, fourth choice. And that's not necessarily just Mourinho pointing at Hera and not having a good relationship with him. It's just been other players have been in better form. And I'll be perfectly honest and frank in saying that I don't think his performances this season when he has played have been anywhere near the level that he showed last year. Okay. He's making sloppy mistakes here and there. Some are saying that he man-marked Ericsson out of the game against Spurs. I didn't see that. I was in. This, you know we sometimes see things differently in the stadium? Yeah, to how for sure. For sure yeah. Maybe he did. And if he does play you, hopefully he can play as good as he did at home last year. But in this formation, I'd probably hazard to guess not. Okay. And I'll play Mkhitaryan in front of Matic and Herrera in the midfield too. And up front, Rashford and Lukaku. Um, Martial, is, he's got like six goals or assists off the bench this season. He's been phenomenal. And we've got, in, whether Martial starts or Rashford starts, one of them will be on the bench. And one of them will come on around about the hour mark. And they will cause you all sorts of no problems. doubt, no doubt. Two Win. wonderful players. It's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant game changing sub that United always have. But how do you expect Chelsea to line up? Who's, uh, well, who, who's I, your think, I think the tricky, the tricky dilemma for us at the moment, because we're quite porous at the back, we need to decide whether we go for the three five two, or whether we go for the like three five two is what you kind of want to do to make sure it's solid. But it takes so much away from what we can do going forward mm. that you kind of need three up there. Because I think that we're quite, we're, we're, we're very dangerous when we have a three up front of Morata, Hazard, Pedro. It works really well. 
But we're asking a lot of our midfield. And I think if I, I don't think Cesc Fabregas can ever in his whole life ever play football again in a midfield two. Which means if you want to play Fabregas, you have to play three, which means you have to drop Pedro. So I, I really don't know how it will go. I feel like I feel like we'll play three up front because we have no option now, Sam, but to go for the jugular. We right. have to beat you because of results that we've had away at Palace and you know at home to Burnley and whoever else. We now have no option but to beat Manchester United at home because if those results hadn't happened, a draw against you. Everyone's happy. Yeah. You know, a draw against Manchester United is an incredible. So a draw is not enough for Chelsea fans. No, not weekend. now. Not, not now. now. We're chasing you. We not have to beat you at home. You have to beat us. We have to beat you at home. To, I mean, I, th- I think our dreams of winning, the, retaining the Premier League are alive on perhaps on life support, but still clinging on. Mm. If you extend the gap, or if we don't close the gap when we have the opportunity to, it's over. So we have no option but to. So, so, you, so you would say at this point going into the game in November, if you do lose this game... Oh, if we lose this, oh yeah, it's completely over. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, it's, if, we lose, if you beat us, if you extend the lead, the lead by another three points, and you've got to assume City will you know, do, we'll uh, get a beat Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. So, but even if City don't actually, even if you extend the gap, we have no option now. We've boxed ourselves into a corner through very, very shoddy performances. That if we're going to retain our title, we have to close a gap when it's in our hands. Mm. We have an option, an opportunity now. We have a six-pointer, really. We can, you know, make up three, cost you three. If we don't take those, it's over. That's a good time to play Chelsea Football Club. It's, it's a great time to play us. It's a great time. Uh, to play obviously, us. United People's TV were backed by Labrooks for the whole season. You could bet five pounds and get twenty pounds free. What more could you want? There's a link in the description. You can follow that, and the code is UTD Peoples. But going into the game. My prediction or my bet would be for a score draw. This strikes me as a game where, yes, clearly Chelsea, they need to win. But just as much as they need to win, Jose Mourinho needs not to lose because of what happened last year at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. This, this, is, this is his personal biggest game of the season. He yeah. wants to come away from that with some self-respect and he didn't have any last year. So he's going to be reeling from that. And we saw a reaction after we played Man City at home last year. And we got torn apart in the first half. We had a midfield two, they had three, 2-0 two to Man City. Ever since then, Mourinho's changed how he plays in the big games. Right. And I just can't, I think this is... For, but a for point Mourinho, for you is a good result, a point, for, a point at Stamford Bridge, a point at Anfield is a good result every single season. Agreed. So I would happily take a draw. But what's your predict- If you were going to lay a bet down, what would, you, what would your bet be? I think you, the, the, the natural bet for, from a Chelsea perspective in a game of this magnitude is to go Eden Hazard first goal. Eden Hazard loves playing in these games. He's got a very good record against you anyway, yeah, personal record. He scores yeah, goals good. against Manchester United. He scores goals against all of the biggest clubs, actually. So I think Eden Hazard first goal, I'd be very interested to see what Labrooks are offering on that. There you go. Hazard, or, as I said, score draw. Which kind of leads me into, into prediction. You kind of know what my prediction is now, but what are you feeling about this game? What is your prediction for the match? Well, despite everything I've said, this is what happens to me. I, I, I just turn into that weird little optimist. You know, that bloke who just goes, oh, Chelsea are the best thing since sliced bread and we're going to win the game. Uh, well, you've got to be optimistic. You've got to, football, yeah, right? you've, got to, you've got to do it. I get a lot of grief for it, but I do think we'll win. I think that in, in a player like Eden Hazard, we have somebody capable of, of winning this match almost on his own. So, Hazard plays well, Chelsea win the game, and I'm going to go for a 2-0 win. Two nil to nil as well. We need I, to keep it to nil. We've been so porous that we need to get a back line settled and start not conceding goals because it's what we were so good at last year. I'll I tell you one thing. United are, we're not crafting chances left, right and centre at the moment. Chances are coming a little bit hard to come by, which will play into your hands defensively. But United's defence has been so good. But I think we'll concede in this game. I'm going to predict a one all draw. And I think for United and for Mourinho, that would be a good result. I hope that we score first. If we don't score first, I don't. I hate chasing the game against Chelsea. Imagine how I feel if you score first. Oh no, good. Mourinho is the, the master of sh- go, shutting up shop. I want that to happen. I want that pain. Passionately, to do not want that. Well, to happen. I absolutely do. But anyway, <laughs> that's our predictions for the game. Thank you very much for joining me for the preview, Rory. Oh mate, it's a pleasure. I'll be chatting to Rory as well over on CFC Fan TV. So make sure you check that out. But going into the match, as you can hear, it's a must not lose for Chelsea. And if United can win. Beat Spurs and Chelsea going into the international break. We are in a good position going into the festive fixture period. Thank you very much. Bad luck on Sunday.